Audio Craver on Home Theater Shack, Audio Craver Wayne on Google Plus and YouTube. I'm documenting the build process for the LX Mini Speaker Kit. Here's mine. It's all done now, obviously. It's a good thing that I committed to do this video because I'm not always the best finisher of projects and this really helped me get things done all the way to the, to the end. And I really love the result. You will too if you build one. I know you're going to have a good time with it and a good time listening to it forever afterwards. Um, the design, of course, is by Siegfried Linkowitz of Linkowitz Labs. Parts get from Matasound and DSP from Mini DSP. Uh, we've got a fun journey ahead of us. I hope you enjoy the ride. Okay, we are looking at the materials for the build of the LX Mini kit, which we got from Matasound. This carton here contains all of the parts from Matasound. Here is the Mini DSP 2x4 unit, which came directly from Mini DSP for this deal. And, of course, just the file from Linkwitz Labs, Sigfrid Linkwitz, which has all the build information and instructions in it. These are the two pieces of PVC pipe, which I already purchased at a local hardware store for this build. What they call for in the instruction set is 4-inch PVC Schedule 40 pipe. Four and a half inches outside diameter, four inches inside diameter, 31 inches long. There were a couple of possible types of pipe that had the same dimensions inside and outside diameter. One of them was a type of pipe that is not made for high pressure situations. It, it was kind of a foam, porous kind of construction lighter weight but it had more of a resonant sound when i tapped on it this that i bought was the heavier more solid type of construction it was slightly more expensive it just came to like a dollar more altogether not much it's more solid made for high pressure situations and i felt it was more appropriate for this type of build especially when tapping on it it just seems more solid it just seemed like what we would want to use for this kind of a build here is a close-up of the print information that is printed on the pipe itself, if that's useful to you. 4-inch Crestline PVC Schedule 40 is the 4-inch inside diameter, which of course is what we're looking for. Like I said before, the higher pressure version I think is better for our application. 220 PSI for water at 73 degrees Fahrenheit is the spec on that, if that's useful to you. It is possible to get the Mini DSP 2 before unit directly from Matasound, also as part of the LX Mini kit. And when you get it as part of the kit, it comes to you pre-programmed so that it's all ready to plug in and use. That's something to consider. I don't think that programming is a big deal, but it might be a convenience that some users uh, would appreciate. So here are the innards of oh, the contents of the box from Matasound. Back in back, we have the acoustic mat, uh, the acoustic uh, absorption padding that will be used to stuff the pipes. We have the uh, four speaker drivers are nicely wrapped up with well protected. We're gonna leave them that way so they don't have us the two base bases for the big tube and the various wooden parts which you don't have to buy from. Uh, from Matasound if you want to do you with the word working yourself but um, boy it sounded like a great idea to me to get all that stuff all done so it's ready to be sanded painted and constructed and put together I'm just not big on woodworking things so the kit sounded like a great idea to me there's also hardware for a lot of the hookup which minimizes the need for soldering it sounded good to me I almost forgot the 4 inch to 4 inch plum quick clay coupler or something you have to buy separately. You can get it at the hardware store. These happen to be on Amazon, pretty good price on Amazon, so I included them with another order at the time. So that's another possibility for you. So here are all the parts together, the pipe, the clay couplers, purchased separately. All the parts that are going to go into this kit are all gathered in one spot. And we'll open up that bundle of wood and little parts from Matasound. Looking further at the Matasound kit, there are two different sizes of screws packaged separately for your convenience. 
on the rubber feet, which will go on the base, the bottom of the base plates of the two speakers. A bag of gold-plated terminals. The coupling pieces that hold the two, the top and bottom of the unit together. And the base plates themselves. Here is a bag of little blocks, little spacers, different kinds of spacers used in the construction of the LX Mini, all pre-cut and drilled and ready to be put to work. We'll see how they work when we get into the instructions. This is the base plate. That is, there is one for each of the two speakers. You can see it's pre-drilled for mounting of these rubber feet. I will be doing something a little bit different on my pair of LX Minis because my basement floor is not quite level, a little bit of slope to it. So that means that the speakers with the regular design would not stand up quite straight and would also not be at exactly the same level. Uh, I have a different technique that I will be using and I will show you what parts you need for that and exactly how that will work when we get to it. You can see the quality of workmanship that goes into the components. The wood components provided in the optional wood component kit from Sound. Unless you are an expert woodworker with all of the tools, I suggest you make life easy for yourself and buy this optional wood parts kit from Sound. It's all CNC milled, pre-drilled, ready to be sanded, painted, and put together. It will definitely save you a lot of time. The drivers that come in the kit from Mata Sound are made by SEAS. They are top quality drivers. They were carefully selected for use in this design by Siegfried Linkowitz. Do not try to substitute another kind of driver. These are the drivers that you have to use in this design if you want to get the kind of performance it was designed to give you. Uh, I suggest you leave them wrapped up like this for protection until you're ready to do that part of the assembly where they're called for. The drivers come nicely wrapped and well are well protected. I'm not going to unwrap them until I am ready in the point of assembly where I need them unwrapped. I want to keep them well protected just the way they are. So we'll leave them just like that. We'll take a better look at them later on when we get to them. Provided with the standard uh, kit from Sound is the Mini DSP 2x4 unit, two inputs and four outputs, analog in and out, 24-bit conversion, 48 kilohertz internal sample rate and a 28-bit internal processing depth. If you prefer, if you have another way of doing the crossover, you can opt out of this for savings or you can substitute the Mini DSP 4x10 unit which provides the opportunity of digital input if you prefer. This odd looking wad of stuffing that was in the bottom of the box may look like just odd packing material. Don't throw it away. Don't give it up for a quilt batting if someone asks to use it for that. This is Acousta stuff, damping material, acoustical damping material. It's a critical part of the design. It will be stuffed into the tubes which the speakers are mounted into and is a very important part of the design. So make sure you save it for the proper use. I just noticed taped inside the bottom of one of these um, end caps, which is part of the base for each of the speakers was a little uh, plastic bag with some little plastic parts in it. I am not sure what they are for. Hang on to them. Don't throw them away. We will find out when we get to the right part of the assembly and we'll figure it out. Included in the kit from Mata Sound is this nice little bag of gold plated parts, terminals for mounting on the speaker drivers themselves and on the base where banana plugs can plug in. You will need to provide quick connect terminals and cable wire yourself, which can also be ordered from Sound. Also, there are optional items on the Sound website. Quick connect terminals and hookup wire, speaker wire, items like that, which you'll need. Banana plugs, if you need those. There are a lot of places you can get them, but they have all that kind of stuff on Sound website also. You'll need your own amplifiers also. Four channels of amplification to run the LX Mini. I've got a couple of stereo amps that I can use for that.
Thinking through the sequence of events for completing the kit, I think the order that makes the most sense to go in is first of all to prepare surfaces for painting, then drill holes and do whatever preparation is needed for final assembly, then do the painting, and then carefully after that do the final assembly. And my reason, part of my reasoning for that is I want to leave hardware pieces uh, with you know, a natural finish uh, as much as possible without trying to, you know, just finish everything in the same color. And uh, I'll show you why in a minute. And I got so excited about starting to make progress that I immediately started painting before drilling holes like I had decided to do. It worked out all right on this piece here. You can see that the PVC is soft enough that once you get a hole started, you can drill pretty safely and accurately without your bit slipping around. In this next photo here we see the way I should have done it, marking the PVC and then drilling the holes before starting to do any painting so that there are less chance of uh, having a problem slipping and messing up the paint job. Most of the painting was, or all the painting was done outdoors actually. Here you can see the four inch PVC piece, the way it was cut at the hardware store was has a pretty rough end. I did not try to smooth all that down because it's not going to show at all. I just filed it quickly and gave it a little bit of a sanding so that it wasn't sharp enough to catch me and cut me or anything. Here is what uh, one of the smaller PVC pieces looked like after the first coat of just the black speckling was applied. We went black and then red and then the navy blue at the last. Here it is again under a little bit different lighting. You can see the contrast between the black and the white. I really like that contrast. Uh, I almost thought of leaving it right there at that point there, but uh, decided to go ahead and try to get the whole effect that I was after in my mind. And I was real happy with the result. Here are the paints that I use for my color scheme. The primer was not used for 100% coverage, just to cover any dark spots. Then the black, which was uh, used fairly irregularly in some places, as you'll see. Then the red, then the navy. Hopefully it'll give just a little bit of a red glow coming out through that navy. And here is the clamping together of the base plate for the low frequency driver with the two spacers on top held properly uh, with the hardware and with protection so that the surface is not marred by the clamp and they're all glued together like that and will be screwed together later. Here's the screwing into the hardware into the base piece. It is actually a four inch end cap which screws down to the base of each of the speakers and has the hardware in it for the cables to pass through. I chose to solder on the inside. I didn't want something that could possibly slip loose if a wire got tugged on by accident. Because you can't get down there, man. You cannot get down there once it's all put together. Right? So that's, I did that for safety. And on the other side, on the bottom side of this, there are banana connectors, which I they extend down far enough that I can't actually plug a banana into them. I just screw onto them from the bottom, but they're very nice connectors and that way we've got a reliable connection on the inside and one that's easy to connect and disconnect on the outside. Here is how the mounting plate fits onto the clay coupler and uh, in a second you'll see just how the speaker fits into that. It's a nice little design. Minimum number of pieces involved in putting it all together. Um, I did not prime every piece of wood, like I said, 100%. I didn't care some grain or some, in this case, just the texture of the wood showed through. Uh, I just wanted to get the, the basic coverage and the color out of it uh, with that color scheme. And here is how the high frequency driver fits into its tube. The three spacer blocks that come with the kit are used to space it while it's screwed into place. We'll see how that happens later on. The spacing of that unit in its tube is 
very critical and would be almost impossible to do without those little spacer blocks. Later on in the process, here's a photo of the black plus red with some priming underneath on the, the big piece there. And uh, that's before the navy was applied. And here is a view of the base plate uh, under different lighting. That's why the red shows up more. Again, that's the black plus the red with a little bit of priming underneath. And uh, at this point, it looks very red. But when you get the navy over that, you get a nice dark, dark tone with just a reddish glow uh, kind of shining through. And I like that. Here is most of the pieces after the first priming and preparation and the first coat of the, the black speckling was applied. A very wasteful process. You just watch all that paint floating away in the wind on the breeze and a little bit of it ends up on the surface. Now these pieces here, the clay couplers are black and so I sprayed primer on them to give a white speckle over black. And I really like the contrast. It really showed up nicely on the clay couplers, that, that contrast. There are a couple photos here of how that ended up looking. I almost wish that I had stopped and left the clay couplers with just black and white speckling as, as a contrast color. Uh, but I did not. If I had to do over again, I would. But there you go. Lesson learned, right? Anyway, the clay coupler with the white priming gave a speckled on, gave a really neat kind of black and white contrast, really showed up nicely. Of course, the clay coupler was kind of hard to handle. It stayed tacky. That, was another, that would be another reason not to apply colors to the clay coupler all, all the way as I did. But uh, anyway, that's the way it goes, right? You learn these things as you go along. Next time I would do it different, and there won't be a next time. Here are the two uh, pieces for the high frequency drivers, which have the black speckling applied. Making good progress here. And in the next photo, you can see uh, a couple of outdoor views. Of course, all the painting was done outside. Very messy process, but it was fun too. Uh, it's fun seeing how those colors kind of came together on those pieces. And a view Again, outdoors of the two longer pieces, I chose to use a much more irregular application of the black, the first black speckling, just to give it more of an irregular kind of interesting texture to the final product.